Hi, my name is Coco. And I'm Ashlyn. And we're with the Santa Barbara Middle School Team Press here with... Christine Belson. It's nice to meet you. It's a pleasure. It's nice to meet you. So can you tell us more about the process of making an animated film from story to screen? Yes, I will say first of all that it is a long process. It takes, um, it can take up to four years, sometimes five years, making The Crudes, the animated movie that I produced. It took almost five years. Um, and the phases are really different. You start off in the beginning with just the script and you're just working with the written word. But in animation, unlike um, in live action movies, we, um, we kind of leave the script behind sort of earlier than you'd think and we, um, we start to work on it in storyboards, which is guys drawing. In the old days, it was with pencils and paper. Now they use these things called cintiques, which are um, tablets, basically. Um, and you draw the whole movie out, and you put temporary voices on it. We usually don't get our actors, our real actors, to actually record the voices for a while until we're kind of sure that we like the story, that we think it's in good shape. And we edit it together, and we use sound effects, and we use lots of little After Effects tricks and things to sort of make it feel like it's animated. Um, and then we watch it, and we usually think, oh my god, this is terrible. We have to do so much work. Um, and then we keep sort of chipping away at it. We're like, well, let's work on Act 1 and make Act 1 better, and then we'll screen it again and go, okay, well, actually, Act 1's pretty good, but boy, it really highlights how lousy Act 2 is, so now we got to work on that. And so it's it's animation. I've, I, I came from live action before I worked in animation. What's really different about animation is it's kind of like, I've never been in theater, but apparently it's like workshopping a play. Like, you get to keep... Uh, you get to keep improving it and sort of doing new versions of it until you're happy with it. So eventually when we get happy with the story, then we start to feed it into production, which means that it actually gets animated and lit and everything gets modeled and surfaced. And that's sort of the more technical part of the process. It's also very creative because they make the movie look beautiful. But anyway, even though that was kind of long, that's actually like a really short explanation of yeah. what making an animated movie is. It's, it's very complex and usually the crews that work on them like will have like three to four hundred people so it's a lot of people working yeah, at the same the time. Department. Yeah, it's many many departments which total about three to four hundred people and it's a lot to and oversee. How many people are per character? Um, well, the animators um, will have one lead animator who is primarily responsible for a character, but then um, they will have other animators on their team who will also work on that character because there's, there's just so much work to do that it would be difficult for one person to sort of do all of it. And then, of course, the actor provides the voice, and that's only one person. The actor, like Nick Cage, was our dad. Uh, named Grug in the movie and so he'll record first and then the animators um, will animate to his voice. Sometimes people are confused by that, they think the animation comes first, but we always record the actors first and then animate to their performance. So you said that you made a newbie mistake on the crudes. You didn't think about which scenes you put through the first in terms of marketing. Can you tell us more about why that was a mistake? Yes, because the first scenes we put through, so the first ones that we had available to us when like our marketing team was like, we want to show people like an early look at the movie, we put through these scenes that I think are really neat in the movie, but they're nighttime scenes and they're really dark. Um, and it's just this character, Eep, the, the lead girl, kind of running through the night and there's no dialogue. And the scenes were great in the movie, but if you were just to sh put that out there and be like, okay, this is what the Croods feels like, it wasn't representative <laughs> at all of really, mostly the movie's kind of colorful and loud. And so that's, if knowing now what I know, uh, if I'd known then what I know now, I would definitely have put something that was more indicative of the movie as a whole through. Um, so that's what I meant by that newbie mistake. Um, can you, can you tell, wait. You might want to ask her about the live action film experience she had before you. Uh, what was your live action film experience oh, like? Sure. Um, I, was a, I was a studio executive for years and I worked on different movies sort of in the, gosh, I guess those were the 90s back then. Um, like movies like Big... Big Daddy and, um, oh gosh, a, a whole bunch. But when I started to actually hands-on produce movies, it was for the Henson Company. So I actually got to make a couple Muppet movies, which was a Muppets lot of fun. Space. Yay! I produced Muppets from Space. I love that movie. It doesn't come up all the time. Um, and uh, so thank you. Um, and, uh, and then some other kind of like, um, kind of like lower budget, like mid-range budget kids movies, like 
I don't even know that you guys would have seen these in a movie called Five Children in It or Good Boy about a boy and his dog. So was doing a lot of family movies. Also, also a character from space, I'm realizing, just like Muppets from space. There's a theme there. Um, but uh, anyway, so I was producing kind of like mid-budget range family entertainment films before I moved over to DreamWorks Animation and started producing in animation. Thank you. You're welcome. Can I? Yeah. Oh, sure. Um, oh, I'm willing. So, <laughs> if you could have one animal from the Croods as your pet, which one would it be? This is so easy for me. In the, the biggest, actually he's not the biggest creature because the walking whale is the biggest creature, but Grug sort of adopts that big cat called the Macanavore. <laughs> Oh my God, he's like so, even though I've never actually touched him, I know that he would be so fluffy <laughs> and soft, and I love cats, so it would be, it would be the McConavore, the big fluffy colorful cat. And if you could relate yourself to one person in the character in the movie, who would it be? You know, it's funny because I probably relate to two of them. I mean, I definitely relate to the mom character, Ugga, because I am a mom. I have a teenage daughter and a teenage son, just like she does, but, but I remember what it's like to be younger and so a lot of me also related to Eep who was like I gotta get out of here I gotta I gotta have adventure I don't want to be stuck in this house or this cave in her instance anymore so um, I kind of related to her too so I guess both the mother and the daughter thank you so oh, much thank you guys. those nice were fun questions you. thank you